back again. Um, I am going to continue my assessment on Luba. I have given her approximately 15 minutes to change. And prior to the assessment, I did um, offer her to use the bathroom to void just to make the assessment of the abdomen and bowels to facilitate it better. Um, I will knock on the door. Hi, Luba. It's Bree, the student nurse. Are you ready? Okay. I'll start by per by offering privacy and shutting the door, and performing hand hygiene. Now it's important to note that because the skin covers the entire body, when we perform a head to toe assessment, we're going to continually assess the integument, um, making sure that the skin is warm and not cold dry and not moist, it's intact, and they're um, observing the presence of any bruising, petechiae, swelling, discolored areas, cyanosis, mole scars, lesions, tattoos, irritation, breakdown, or drainage. I will start my assessment um, in a head-to-toe fashion with her scalp. I will apply gloves. Get my gargantuan hands in these bad boys. All right. And I will begin by observing her scalp and her hair. Observing um, hydration of the scalp, any discoloration, bumps, lesions, the qual her hair quality, absence of dryness or petechiae, and I'm also going to want to just palpate around. Now sometimes in school age children it's important to look for lice um, in all age groups but specifically school age children. And I'm feeling her scalp, there's no bumps, abnormal tees, her hair is soft, shiny, um, there's no dandruff, so she checks out good there. Following observation of her scalp, I'm going to get an overall look at her face, making sure it's symmetrical. I'm going to stand midline. Her eyes are symmetrical. They're both open. Her eyebrows are at the same level. Um, I'm next going to look at her. I'm going to observe for any masses on her face. Um, there are none. I'm next going to look at her eyes, noting any discharge, symmetry, which I have observed already. I am going to observe her sclera, making sure that they're white, uh, absence of any jaundice. I'm going to shine a light in her eye and observe perla. I want her pupils to be round, reactive to light and accommodation. And I'm also going to check out her extraocular movement. So first I'm going to shine a light on the side of your eye and observe that her pupils react to the light accordingly. And you want to make sure that the reactivity of the pupils is symmetrical. And I also observe that her sclera is white in the absence of jaundice. There is no discharge. Luba, I'm going to have you follow the, the tip of my pen here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go in this way. Here I am observing her extraocular movements. And I'm going to center the pen midline. And I'm, I'm going to watch for her, the accommodation of her eyes to focus near and far. I would also observe at this point the presence of any glasses or contacts. Do you see an ophthalmologist? No. Do you wear glasses? No. Contacts? No. And do you have, ever have any problems with your vision? No. Not at all. Following observation of her eyes, I'm going to move down in a systematic fashion to her nose. I'm going to observe for any discharge. I'm going to shine a light in her nose and observe any inflammation or redness. And then I'm going to do a survey of her, her sinuses, so I'm going to take a peek up here. And everything looks good, there's no redness, the mucosal linings in her nose are well hydrated, pink and moist. There's no discharge. I am next going to palpate your, your sinuses. So I'm going to start with, you, with, your, with your, t 
temporal sinus here. Do you feel any pain? No. Sensitivity? No. Tenderness? No. Okay, next I'm gonna I'm gonna palpate her other sinuses in an upward fashion. Do you feel any pain? No. Okay. And then I'm going to just do you feel any pain here? Okay. After observation of her nose and sinuses, I'm going to move down to her mouth. I'm going to observe her lips for symmetry, um, absence of cyanosis. We want them to be pink, moist, and symmetrical. I'm going to have her open her mouth and I'm going to observe her teeth, make sure they're white. And it's also a good time to um, observe her hygiene. So, Luba, can you open your mouth for me? I'm looking at her mucosa. They're pink, moist. And can you stick out your tongue? Her tongue is mobile and symmetrical. Can you, uh, uh, -uh. <laughs> it's free of any lesions. And can, I'm just going to look at her teeth and gums and note if I see any bleeding. And I do not. It's absent of bleeding. Um, everything looks pink, moist, and soft as it should, absence of lesions. Next, I'm gonna move down, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shine my light in her ears and note any discharge, redness, skin breakdown behind the ears. It's important to note in people who use oxygen therapy, sometimes they have um, pressure ulcers behind their ears. And you're definitely gonna wanna take note of that. So I am going to shine my light in her ear. They look clean, intact, absence of redness. You're also going to want to note the symmetry. Now, Luba, I'm gonna. I'm just going to perform a hearing test on you. I'm gonna, can you hear? Can you hear this? Yes. How about this? Yes. Okay. After I check her her hearing, um, I am going to move down to her neck, palpate her lymph nodes, and nothing seems swollen which would indicate that she's not currently fighting an active infection. As I work down, I'm going to palpate her carotid arteries one at a time so you don't block the blood flow to her neck. And you're going to want to observe that they're both strong and equal bilaterally. And they are. It's important to note that if, you, if someone does have an irregular pulse, you definitely want to palpate for at least 60 seconds. Um, once I, once I palp palpate her lymph nodes and her carotid arteries, I'm going to ask her to perform a range of, range of, um, motion exercises in her neck. So, Luba, can, can you shake your head from side to side? Good. <laughs> how about, how about <laughs> up and down? Good. Alright, as, as she brings her head back, I'm going to check her neck for any fullness in, 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 see if her thyroid is visible. So Luba, can you move your neck back? So you're going to want to check her neck and make sure that there's no fullness and there is not. Make sure the thyroid gland is not enlarged. Following observation of her neck, I'm going to move down her arms in a systematic fashion. I'm going to palpate her arms for muscle tone and she is very strong. <laughs> I'm going to observe temperature with the dorsum of my hand and she is, her temperature is good. I, as I move down, I'm gonna I'm gonna note her, I'm gonna observe her brachial pul brachial pulse on each arm, making sure it's strong and equal bilaterally. Um, as I do an assessment of her upper extremities, I would I would obtain a blood pressure using a blood pressure cuff about one inch above her brachial artery, um, on a side of her preference in the absence of a fistula. I would move down her arm. Noting the temperature with the dorsum of my hand, I would perform a skin turgor test to observe that she's hydrated and skin elasticity. Hers is very, uh, she has great skin turgor. <laughs> it bounces right back. How you do that, you're going to pinch the skin and watch um, how fast it returns to its original state. And hers is, is very quick. As I move down, I am going to observe her hands, her fingernails are a good indicator of her sh of vascularity to the fingertips and also um, occupation, um, personal hygiene, self-care, 
She is wearing a little bit of nail polish, but it is still possible to perform the cap refill test on her. How you do that is you would pinch the person's finger. It's going to blanch, and then the color is going to return. You want the cap refill to be less than three seconds. That That is just an indicator that she is um, receiving good circulation to her fingertip. When I'm when I'm in when I'm working when I'm uh, assessing her arm, I will also assess her radial pulse, which would be right about underneath where her watch band would be here. I'm going to do this on both sides to to observe um, strong and equal pulses bilaterally. And and while I'm doing an assessment of her upper extremity, I'm checking for CMS, which is circulation, movement in sensation. So after after analyzing her pulses, blood pressure, and looking at her fingertips and capillary refill, I would I would use a Q tip to check the sensation. I would do this on both extremities, upper and lower. In order to do this test, you're gonna have the patient close their eyes and I'm gonna tell her that I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna explain the process. So I'm gonna touch you with this Q tip. We're checking for sensations. I'm going to touch you with both the soft side and the hard side, and you're going to tell me the difference. So close your eyes, and this is what the soft side feels like, and then the hard side feels like this. So I'm going to poke your fingers, and you're going to tell me what you feel. So, what do you feel on this finger? All right, how about this finger? Okay, good. I'm going to do this on all fingers to verify that she has proper sensation in both upper extremities and then later in the lower extremities. Now to complete my assessment of the upper extremities, I'm going to do some range of motion upper exercises with her arms and some strength exercises. So Luva, can mm -hmm. I have you can I have you raise your arms like this and circumduct? All right, stop in reverse directions. Good. Can you raise your arms up and down and, and drop them down to your sides? Now raise your arms straight ahead equally. This this right here tests, I can use this to test her strength, but also her ability to raise her arms equally is a neurologic test um, and it involves a lot of brain symmetry. So I'm going to ask you to push down on my hands. Good. And I'm going to ask you to to flip your wrists over. Good. I'm going to push down and I'm going to ask you to resist. And she is very strong. <laughs> and good. And can you rotate your wrists for me? And bend your arms up and down. Good. <laughs> She's a pro. All right. This concludes the assessment of her head, neck, and upper extremities.